Allison Smith, and I'm here with Arizona here at Arizona Science Center for Early Learning Live. So thank you all for joining us this morning for our Early Literacy and STEM activity. Today, we are going to be talking about balance. And we're going to be using some content that comes out of the Franklin Institute, all the way in from our friends in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we're going to be doing their Leap into Science Balance Program. So Leap into Science is a national network and a program that you can find out more about at leap.fi.edu. And today, so talking about balance, so everyone at home, how do you balance? So right now I want everyone to try to balance. Can you balance on one foot? What if you balance on one foot and put your hands in the air? What if you balance on one foot and put your hands down by your side? Now can you try balancing with your hands out? Hmm, interesting. Is it easier or harder when your hands are out by your side? Well, everyone, you can reply in those comments, so feel free to leave comments and answer the questions as we go on. So here at the Science Center, we have this really awesome exhibit about balance as well. So we talk about balance a lot. So we have these knobs for our balancing act, and we have guests can come through and try their balance. So not only are they balancing on one foot, but this is balancing on something a little less stable with both feet. Now, when thinking about balance, you use balance when you ride your bike, you use balance when you're trying to walk on the sidewalk and walk on the curb. Balance is a part of our everyday life. To talk about balance and learn a little bit more, we're going to be reading a story called The Balancing Act by Ellen Stoll Walsh. So, The Balancing Act. The mice made a teeter-totter. It was fun to balance. Do you see here how the mice are? Are they balanced right now? We have one, mice, one mouse down here and one mouse up there. Hmm. Does this seem balanced? Let's see. One mouse on each end. Ta-da! Ta-da! Look, now they are balanced. So this teeter-totter is even. So they are balanced. Just like your arms, while we were balancing on one leg, just like our arms were out and even, and we were balanced, these mice are now balanced. But then a salamander wanted a turn. Hmm. What happened when the salamander joined? Are they balanced anymore? Hmm, they don't look very balanced to me. Hmm. Luckily, a friend stepped in to help. Perfect, balanced again. Hmm, so let's count. How many do we see on each side? We see one, two. What about the other side? One, two. So we have two on this side, two on this side, and now, once again, they are balanced. Uh-oh, a frog. What do you think is gonna happen next? I see this frog coming in over here. What do you predict is going to happen? Hmm. I wonder. Whoa, uh oh Frog caused a mess over here. Now we have one, two, three, and one, two. Are they balanced anymore? Hmm, this doesn't look very balanced. But then, another frog. What do you predict is gonna happen when we add another frog? Do we think it's going to be balanced? These mice, they're good. they have lots of friends joining them. They're not practicing their social distancing, though we should be practicing social distancing at home. Ah, balance once more. Now it's nice and balanced. We have a salamander, a frog, and a mouse. A salamander, a frog, and a mouse. What do you think, what do you think might happen next? Do you think it's gonna stay balanced? Hmm, I wonder. Oh no. A bird wants to balance. Can anyone find the bird? Where do we see the bird? Hmm. I noticed some feathers in this corner. Now, we can only see these feathers, so do we think it's going to be a big bird or a small bird? Hmm, looks like they have these wings. Hmm, I wonder. Oh, whoops, 
That's not gonna work. He was definitely a big bird. And what did the big bird do? He made it all unbalanced. And this poor mouse is flying in the air. Or maybe it will. Ta-da! We have this one big bird and we have all the other animals on the side. Are they balanced? Sure looks like it. How did they balance? This time we have one, two, three, four, five, six animals on one side and one animal on the other side. So how is this balanced? Hmm, what do we notice about the size of the bird and the size of the other animals? Very interesting. So definitely a big bird, but not for long. Too many balancers, oh no. Look at the balancing beam. It just snapped right in the middle. That bird, too much weight on one side. Oops, my book was not balanced. I almost dropped it. Time for everyone to find something else to do. So the salamanders, the frogs, and the bird are all leaving. except for the mice. Hmm, what do the mice have? So I see these two mice, and these two mice, I see that they're carrying part of the stick. So the rest of the stick's over here. I wonder, what are the mice going to do next? Let's find out. Ta-da! Hey, the, mouse, the mice found a new way of balancing, so they were able to balance on this stick. So that was a balancing act by Ellen Stoll Walsh. And we have some other ways that we can practice and play with balance at home because balance is really fun. You can balance with your bodies, you can balance on your bike, you can also balance with things that you have. So if you have a ruler, how can we balance this ruler? Is the ruler gonna be balanced if I put it over here? Ooh, doesn't seem very balanced. What if I put my finger over here? not to drop the ruler doesn't seem very balanced so if you have a ruler at home you can try to see where on the ruler do you need to put your finger to balance it so I can balance my ruler with my finger in the very middle so I have an equal weight on both sides now if we think about this ruler it's pretty easy to see it's equal on both sides now how does that compare to a pencil so let's think do we predict that the pencil is going to balance the same or different from this ruler? Hmm. You have a pencil. Try this at home. Will the pencil balance? Let's try the pencil. Will the pencil balance in the middle? Ooh. Hmm. It's not balancing in the middle, but the ruler balanced in the middle. What's different about this pencil? Well, let's look. If I put my finger in the middle, do I have even weight on both sides? No, because this side of the pencil has this eraser. So to balance the pencil, oops, not very good at balancing pencils, and that's okay, it takes many tries. I have to be a little bit more on this side for it to balance. Hmm. I encourage you to try to find other things at your home and see if you can try to balance them on your finger and see how you can make that weight even on both sides. Now, if I have a piece of paper at home, and I cut out, this is my friend, call her Marette. Uh, and so if I have this Marette, can I get her to balance on my finger? Paper balancing on a finger? She's gonna just fall right over. Whoops. But, what if I give her some more weight? I have some paper clips here, and I'm gonna put a paper clip on each of Marette's hands. Hmm, hey look. She kind of balances a little bit better. Let's try a little bit more weight on each of those hands. One. So now we have how many paper clips on each side? We have one, two, and one, two. Let's see, now will she balance? Hey, look, we were able to balance Marat on our finger because we added that equal weight to both sides. 
Now another fun way you guys can explore balancing at home is you can make your very own teeter-totter. So this teeter-totter is just a small funnel attached to a paper clip, uh, or a clothespin, sorry, and then we put an egg crate on top. And so this is gonna be a nice way to just balance this egg crate. Then if you have any toys, you can use buttons, you can use uh, little spools or little animals. You can test, I wonder, which of these is going to weigh more? Let's try it out. If I put this on this side of the teeter-totter, and this on this side, is it even? Is it balanced? Hmm, doesn't look very balanced. But what if I add another animal to this side, oops, and another button to this side, does it look balanced now? So now we can explore different items, adding them in, and seeing how it affects the way that they balance. It's a pretty fun, easy activity that you can do with some things that you might have around the house. Another way that we can explore balance is by creating a balancing sculpture. So this is a balancing sculpture that I created, so a nice work of art. Uh, that balances, and I am going to try to balance this on my finger. So I made sure that I had even weights on both sides. Oof, I need to practice my balancing. And that's okay, guys. If you fail the first time, keep trying over and over again. That's what engineers do. That's what scientists do. So you're going to have to redesign and design this a few times before you can get it to balance. So it looks like I might need some more weight. So I'm going to have to keep redesigning this, maybe adding some more items to each side to create something that'll balance on my finger and also be a really cool piece of art. Let's see. Oops. I might have to keep balancing and practicing this after, uh, after this early learning live this morning. So balancing sculptures you can make with anything that you have around the house. Just another fun way to practice balance. You can also make them just balance on the table if you prefer fun ways to explore balance at home. If you have any of these balancing toys, they work in the same way with equal weight on both sides. So today we were exploring balance and all the ways that we balance with our bodies, we balance with objects. Balance is a part of our everyday life. So thank you so much for joining us this morning for Early, morning, early Learning Live. Uh, we'll be here every morning at 9.30 and then we also have our demos at 1 o'clock. So feel free to tune in then to Facebook Live and check out our website, azscience.org, for even more cool things you can do at home. Thank you all.